You are anointed, but you can only be appointed once your rejection has been healed. Even if you have forgiven, it doesn't mean that you are healed, which means the next person that rejects you doesn't get the appropriate response because they get the wound of every rejection. But now, after you have forgiven, see, forgiveness is always first. Comes what? Comes healing. He heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. Welcome to the 3C Live Experience, a dynamic, multiracial, fast-growing church with thousands of believers filled with passion for God and for people. 3C is founded by Pastors Bert and Shawnee Pretorius. Pastor Shawnee also leads the women's ministry through the It's a Girl Thing movement desiring to see all women reach their full potential in Christ. Commanded to love, commissioned to make disciples and challenged to change. Our 3C youth movement, The Vault, mentors and inspires our youth to serve God with an unlimited zeal to become unshakable leaders in their own spheres. The love of our pastors is seen in many social welfare development projects. 3C is feeding thousands of underprivileged children on a daily basis with determined intent of fulfilling the mandate of preaching to the poor through radio, television, and the web. With a vibrant, contagious spirit of worship, let's join 3C in this live experience. For when you need someone to stand with you, we will pray for you. SMS your prayer request to triple three four seven, and we will pray for 30 days, trusting God for a miracle in your life. SMS the word pray, followed by your prayer request to triple three four seven, and we will pray for you. Let's for now turn our attention to the word for the session. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 25. We're going to look at this chapter. We're going to paraphrase it. So for time's sake, because there's 44 verses, bump your neighbor, said yes. She said 44. Not 144, thank God. <laughs> but let's pray over this word. Father, we humble ourselves. We humble ourselves at the hearing of the word. This is not the word of a person. This is not the word of an institution. This is not the opinion of a denomination. This is the word of God. It is written. And as it is written, we receive it from heaven as the life transforming power that it is, as the only thing that can turn the hearts of people towards God. The word of God breathed on by the spirit of God is what we need now here in this place. We don't want Lord God, just another experience. We want an encounter. We want a transforming encounter that will set us on a course that we will never look back from. Never reconsider the former ways, but step into something new right now in Jesus' name. If that is your prayer, say amen. 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 And may the Holy Spirit help me and, and really speak to you the word of the Lord. As we go through this, it starts in verse 1. It says, Samuel died. Samuel was the prophet and the priest at this time in the history of Israel. He represented God to the people. He represented the people to God. And he's the protector of David. He stands between David and Saul. Saul wants to kill David. In actual fact, he has mobilized his army. You know this word in South Africa. He sent some assassins. Have you read our newspapers lately? crazy. But it's nothing new. It happened in the Bible. And so Saul had sent some assassins. He had sent a group of men, armed, skilled warriors, gladiators after David, and he's trying to kill him. But because of Samuel, Saul held back a little bit. But now Samuel is dead and the protection is gone. So what happens as we go on in verse one, it says, David went to the wilderness. He was hiding. Bump to your neighbor. Say, are you hiding? You're hiding from some assassins? <laughs> 
So David went into the wilderness. What's in the wilderness? Nothing. What's in the wilderness? Nothing. Nothing. So he went hiding in the wilderness with 600 men. That was the following of David at this stage. Now remember, Israel is a massive nation. Saul had many, many more multitudes of hundreds of thousands of people in his army, in his group, on his side, in his camp. How many did David have? 600. Where is he hiding? In the wilderness, because Samuel had died. Now we go to verse two, it says, there was a man in Mahon. Now Mahon, the name Mahon, the name of the city means the place of sin. Let me give you a clue here. Never go dwell in a city that is called this place of sin. It's never a good thing. But anyway, there is a man from Mahon. He does his business in Carmel. He's very clever though, because Carmel means the vineyard of God. <laughs> so he does business in a good place, but he's living in a bad place. His name, now it says of this man, he was very rich. Yes, but he was still a bad man. And the name of the man was Nabal. Now Nabal means fool. I don't know how when you deliver your baby, you look at that baby and you go, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> and the husband and the wife look at one another and they go, hey, shh. We're going to have to name him Fool. I don't know what happened at his birth. I don't know who was in the room. I don't know what the opinions of the grandparents were. But here he is born and he's named Fool. And he's married to a woman whose name is Abigail. And her name means beautiful. Gift of my father. Now you understand. Listen to me. That girls, if you're beautiful... You can pretty much marry whoever you want to. <laughs> but in the time of the Bible, you had to marry who, you, who your parents said. Can you imagine? <laughs> her name means the gift of my father. So her father gives her as a gift to a... I didn't say it, you said it. I didn't say it. I didn't say it. I just want to say I didn't say it. She was beautiful, the Bible says. She was an extremely gifted, talented woman we're going to see right now. But her parents gifted her. She was a gift to this man, Nabal, who was a fool. If we skip down to verse 4, now we have a problem. David is in the wilderness. What's in the wilderness? Nothing. A little louder. What's in the wilderness? Nothing. Hey. So what do you eat in the wilderness? What do you drink in the wilderness? How do you survive in the wilderness? You need help. As David and his 600 men are in the wilderness and there's no food, there's no water, there's no supply, there's no provision, there's no weapons, there's no tents. You are exposed to the harsh conditions of the wilderness. Now he is looking for someone to help him and he says to his young men, his young men, a few of them, he says, go to Carmel and go to Nabal, greet him in my name. In other words, tell him that I sent you. Me, David, his friend. Now, why would David do this? Because previously, David, David and his men spent some time around the place where Nabal and his men were, and they protected him. They helped him. They looked after his flock and his sheep and his goats and his men and his wives and his children were protected by the men of David. Listen, if someone has looked after you and now all of a sudden they need food, surely it's not unreasonable to expect you to help them and give them food, right? Now let's look at the response because we, 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 we would expect Nabal to say, sure thing, friend. But remember, his name means? Mm, you said it. So he says in verse 8, Let my young men find favor in your eyes, for we come on a feast day. So they're not even coming in a difficult season. They're not coming in a depression or a recession or a load shedding. They are coming on a good day. They're not coming on a burst water pipe day. They're coming on a good day. 
They're coming to Nabal and his men in the season of sheep shearing, which is the most abundant season of all seasons. They are shearing the sheep. They are selling the wool. They are gathering all their gains for the year. There's profit. There's feasting. There's food. There's drink. There's, there's everything that you can think of. It is a festive season. A little bit like Christmas when everything is excessive. It's like that. Okay, so in this time of generosity, he sends his men to his friend. Use air quotes. Look at your friend. Go, friend. Friend. Are you my friend? (laughs) Or are you my friend? (laughs) Or are you maybe my friend? (laughs) Well, let's see. Please give what comes to your hand to your servants and to your son, David. Look how humble he is. He he has been anointed as king, but he calls himself son, right? Give food to the son of David. He is David, but he's humbling himself and he's saying, I need you to help me right now. Let's look at the response. Then Nabal answered David's servants and said, who is David? Um... Okay, maybe he forgot. Let's read further and see if he forgot. Who is the son of Jesse? He did not forget. (laughs) He's like saying, who is Shanae? And then before you can answer, the person goes on to say, the wife of Bert Pretorius, the one that I... (laughs) In other words, you know who they are. So you are dissing them. You are dismissing them. Who is David? In other words, in our language, the way we would say today, who does he think that he is? Oh, have you ever? (laughs) Have you ever had that said of you? Or maybe you have said it of someone else. (laughs) Who is David? Who is the son of Jesse? Who does he think he is? Then he goes on, he says, these are my sheep. These are my goats. These are my soldiers. This is my food. This is my wine. This is mine, 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 mine. See, because the moment you say, who are you? You are saying, do you know who I am? Who do you think you are? Don't you know who I am? Woo! South Africa. What was his name again? Mm. David had helped him. David had protected him. David had looked after not just his animals, but his wives and children. David was a shield around him from the enemies. And there were lots of wars raging at the time that we read this story here in the Word of God. You would expect him at least out of gratitude, if nothing else, if only for gratitude, that he would repay David with a few chops and bread. Lamb chops. I know you all eat KFC, but in the Bible, it's much more lamb chop than chicken licken. So he says, who is David? Who's the son of Jesse? There are many servants nowadays who break away from his master. Not only says, not only does he say, who does he think he is? He calls him a rebel. He says, I'm with Saul. He broke away from his master. I'm with Saul. Who was anointed? David, you can never align yourself with someone who's not anointed by God. You are being foolish. You must align yourself with the anointing, whether you agree, whether you understand, whether you like, whether you're impressed, makes no difference because God chooses, not you. God chose David and he anointed him to be the next king. But Nabal dismisses him. It says, I'm not gonna do it. So the young man turns away on their heels. The Bible uses the word revile. The word revile here in the original text means like an eagle that shrieks as it comes down to grab, say, a bunny. Oh no, you're gonna feel too sad for the bunny. Okay, a rat. It says, that's how, Dave, that's how Nabal treated David, like trash, and him the big eagle. 
which uh, we obviously understand was a mistake. So David says to his men, now let's look at the response of David. He says to his men, get your swords. This is a bit of a disproportionate response. (laughs) I ask for bread. You say no. I say, I kill you. (laughs) Wow. This is a weird story, but it is written. He says, we want some chops. We need some bread. It is feasting season. You have so much of it. It will cost you nothing to share it with us. Please, we are hungry. We are here in the wilderness. Who are you? Who do you think you are? This is mine. I'm not going to give it. You're a rebel. I'm with Saul. Right? Okay. And then David, David, with the same sort of attitude goes, well, then I kill you. He had 600 men. He left 200 men in the wilderness with whatever little that they had, took 400 armed men to go and kill Nabal. It's a bit crazy. What do we call that, girls? Overreaction. All the husbands just go. (laughs) You know it, right? (laughs) Hyper. Sensitivity. Overreact, a disproportionate reaction. What happened to him did not demand the reaction that we see. Now we're going to look at why David reacted in such a crazy way. One of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, So she made haste, verse 18, and took, listen to this girl, she could bake 200 loaves of bread, two skins of wine, five sheep already dressed, five sears of roasted grain, 100 clusters of raisins, 200 cakes of figs and loaded them. She must have been in the kitchen every day, all day, from the rising of the sun to the setting down of the same. She be domestic, our girl Abigail. She loads all of this on donkeys. Why? She's not a fool. She understands that if David comes with 400 armed men, her husband, and now not only her husband, all the men in her village will be dead. So she makes a plan. It says she sends all of the gifts. Your gift will make room for you. Listen to me. Listen, listen. It doesn't say your talent. That's another sermon for next time. But it doesn't say your talent, it says your gift. Taking out your pocket, paying, will make room for you. What does she have because she sends a gift? She has David's ear. For when you need someone to stand with you, we will pray for you. SMS your prayer request to 33347 and we will pray for 30 days, trusting God for a miracle in your life. SMS the word pray followed by your prayer request to 33347 and we will pray for you. know God. You won't understand God. You won't understand the DNA of who Christ is unless you do the Bible. You are anointed, but you can only be appointed once your rejection has been healed. He heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds, healing to your heart so that you can respond in a righteous way. When we stand in the presence of the Lord, 
El Señor no nos va a decir the Lord is not going to say, ¿Cómo te fue en tu empleo? How did you do in your job? ¿Cómo te fue en tu estudio? How did you do in school? ¿Cómo te fue con tu familia? He's not going to say, how did you do in your family? El Señor va a decir, the Lord is going to say, ¿Qué fruto tienes? Where is your fruit? God has chosen Bienaventurada. you. What does the Bible say? It says that you are blessed. El que tú blessed is the person that Los que you en esta reunión, every todos one of us that are here, every one of us, we have para been chosen to preach con the gospel with signs, wonders, and miracles. Without the anointing, we are limited in all things. Our resources are limited. Our energy is limited. Our knowledge is limited. Our wisdom is limited. Our talent is limited. But God is not limited by anything. You lack wisdom? The Holy Spirit will give you wisdom. There is no sphere of the world where we are not supposed to shine. We are supposed to shine in every sphere, in every place, in every arena, in every dimension of the world. You cannot have fire unless you have oil. You cannot be the light of the world unless you have something inside. The oil. You need an extra oil, not just for today, but consistently anointed. You never run out of oil. The Bible says you are the light, but you are also on the hill. In other words, you are at an advantage. And your purpose is to brighten the corner where you are. There is no time to waste. Begin to bring that light right now. Life is full of great starters. We are desperately short of great finishers. But I'm here to tell you, you're anointed to not only start, you're anointed to finish what he started on the inside of you. Baby Shine. No matter the age, no matter the background, no matter the journey, ladies, this is for you. To the mother, the daughter, and the sister, this is for you. We invite you to join us for an encouraging jam packed program with Pastor Shanae Pretorius every Thursday at 11 a.m. For every girl, for the girls. Join us for our annual It's a Girl Thing conference on the 8th to the 9th of September 2023. Hosted by Pastor Shanae Pretorius at the Moraleta Church in Swane. With guest speakers, Pastor Geraldine Bellano, Pastor Johanna Cassianos, Pastor John Jenkins, First Lady Trina Jenkins, and joining us live, Grammy Award-winning artist, C.C. Wynant. Visit www.my3c.tv and get registered today. Join the Vault Youth Conference on the 16th to the 17th of June, 2023 at the Moraleta Church in Tuane. Register today on my3c.tv.
3C Live Experience was brought to you by the 3C Media Production. For more information, call us on 86 2345 or log on to my3c.tv. Or you could write to us at PO Box 10508 Centurion 0046 or email us at tv at my3c.tv. If you need prayer, SMS the word PRAY followed by your prayer request to 33347 and our team of prayer warriors will pray for you for 30 days. If you would like to become a partner with the ministry, SMS the word PARTNER to 33347 and one of our team members will get back to you within the next few days. You can follow Pastors Bert and Shane Pretorius on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram to be inspired daily by morning devotions, ministry updates and much, much more. Log on to my3c.tv for more information.